Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Raging Fire, a Hong Kong action flick from 2021 that was directed by our good friend, Benny Chan, and stars Donnie Yen and Nicholas Che. Now this is my single most highly anticipated film of the entire year, and I'm happy to say that it freaking delivers. Yes, it delivers. So our main character is a man named Bong, played by Donnie Yen, who is a highly respected, honorable cop, of course, with a long history of success on dangerous cases. Unfortunately, his past unexpectedly comes back to haunt him when a sting operation is attacked by a mysterious group of criminals led by his former protege, played by Nicholas Che. His name is Ngo in the film. He's a talented former officer who had once respected and admired Bong. Unfortunately, a terrible mistake three years prior landed him into prison, quickly turning the once rising star into a furious man with a grudge and the will to destroy everyone who had wronged him, including his former mentor. So in terms of story and plot, it's a pretty conventional film. All right. There are multiple flashback sequences that develop the key event in the past that has driven a wedge between these two men. Now, back in the day, Donnie and Nicholas would bond while playing games like ping pong. Yes, ping pong, folks. I'm not joking. And scenes like this are no surprise if you're a fan of this director. An unfortunate event, of course, occurs, and they are now rivals. But over the course of the film, I must say... You can understand why Nicholas Che's character is so pissed off. I mean, he made a mistake. He went over the line. Sure. But he was also hung out to dry by a bunch of corrupt cops and businessmen. And there were some scenes where I was actually rooting for the villains uh, to get revenge on some of these corrupt slime balls. So that's good. Donnie also has some run-ins with the bureaucrats, and uh, they want him to, like, play ball and, like, uh, you know, like, uh, I guess cross the line in terms of his morale. But he refuses, and that does not exactly help his career. So as much as some people might like to label this film as, like, brainless action, it does have enough characterization and conflict building to drive things in between the action. Now, some of Benny Chan's films can get pretty cheesy, even downright stupid, but Raging Fire takes itself pretty seriously, and it pulls it off. Now, the pacing, very brisk for a two-hour film, lots of shakedowns and interrogations in between the action set pieces. The movie never really seems to drag much, or, you know, some films that are two-plus hours always feels like there's dull filler in there. It's not really the case here. You know, it really isn't. One possible exception, and this is one problem I have with the film, is the wife character of Donnie Yen. She's severely underdeveloped. Severely. You know, to the point where she's just, like, pointless to be in the film. And as a viewer, I really did not care for her much at all. But we only really get a few brief scenes with her, so it's not like they waste a lot of time on her. And uh, the script does utilize her existence to create a thriller sequence later in the film. Kind of a minor flaw I think this character is in the film. Nothing significant, but it's worth noting. Now the action delivers. We get a handful of highlight set pieces that are spaced throughout the film. Okay, so we get an early shootout between a few gangs, Nicholas Che's crew, and a bunch of cops. A good scene to warm things up. We get a brawl involving Donnie, who needs to fight... He's got to fight this whole bunch of goons to get to a drug dealer who may have some information that he needs. Some hard-hitting fisticuffs and falls in that scene. I liked it. The next set piece is like, it's a blend. It's like a foot chase, car chase, shootout, hybrid. That's fun to watch. Some pretty neat choreography in that scene. You know, you'll have a scene where a car is driving and a dude on a motorcycle is driving next to it. And it's a pretty interesting... I guess fighting techniques involved when they're engaging with each other. So some pretty creative stuff in there. And then this movie makes the very wise and fantastic decision to save 
the best action set piece for the end of the film. All right. So it ends on a big high. It's like a multi-staged crescendo of mayhem. Begins with kind of a robbery escape shootout scene. It kind of reminded me of Michael Mann's Heat in the way it's constructed. But this is, of course, in the Hong Kong style. So it's got a slightly higher octane and a few more explosions to it. Kind of sets itself apart. The, the, the direction during that scene, particularly impressive, I think. And then that transitions to a one-on-one fight to the death slugfest. And I gotta say, this fight at the end of this film could be an instant classic. It's long enough, and it's got multi-staged elements to it. You get knife play, you get fisticuffs, you get sledgehammer attacks, etc. So it really, it's really satisfying, the end of this film. Really good stuff. When the film is over, it, uh, it, it scratches the itch, okay? It does, it does. And now one final note is related to the production values, which are quite strong. You know, yellow is a color that is emphasized quite a bit in this film, especially during the night scenes. I really like the use of yellow in night scenes, and it seems to be more, at least slightly more prevalent in films that I've seen in recent years. And I do think yellow is a fantastic color to emphasize during the night because it contrasts against the darkness that's around it. And it looks very nice. I hope more movies do this. I greatly prefer like yellow or orange tints at night compared to just normal lighting. So that's good. I did, listen, this is the most highly anticipated film that I've had probably since The Night Comes For Us. That movie delivered, and I think that this movie delivers as well. Now, this is a memorable film not just because it's so entertaining, And not only because it's Benny Chan's last film, but it could be one of the last old school Hong Kong action fests that we're going to get. You know, I don't don't know if anyone really knows what the landscape of Hong Kong cinema is going to be in the next handful of years. But this could be kind of like one of the final uh, contributions to kind of a dying uh, subgenre of film that's distinct to that area of the world. But if you have any interest of action in action films at all, you need to watch Raging Fire. It's currently available, streaming on the Haya website. Uh, it's like a separate website for movies. Very cheap. It's like three or four bucks a month. So it's worth checking out. And a Blu-ray is also scheduled for release on November 23rd. So definitely check this one out, folks. And Benny Chan, I'm really going to miss this guy. I am. I did do a filmography review of basically all of his films last year. It was like last December with Harris Dang. So if you want more recommendations from this director, check out that video. I'll include a link in the description box below. But Benny, we're going to miss you, man. We really are going to miss you. And as always, we'll see you next time.